Hello friends, my name is Shayla and today I am here to wrap up the first half of my reading month for November. I am participating in Tome Topple this round, so I will do my Tome Topple second half of the month reading wrap up after Tome Topple is over obviously. So I'm going to wrap up everything I read up to Tome Topple which started on the 16th. So I've got a good chunk of manga as well as five books. This time I'm going to start with the books and then have the manga at the end. So for those of you who want the manga, here's the timestamp for you. And those of you who are, who are here for the books, it's coming at the front instead of at the back, unlike my last wrap up. And I hope you stick around for all of it because I read some great stuff and I would love to talk to you about it. So digging right in here, I'm going to start with the two ebooks that I read. Both of them were sent to me for review. The first one is Amanda vs. the Universe by Patricia B. Tai. Trisha Tai and I have a great relationship back and forth. She's become a very dear, sweet friend of mine, and I seriously have loved all of her books. They are just that really sweet high school contemporary story. They do hit on topics that tend to you know, be pertinent to the time, and she does delve into some deeper, darker, psyche kind of things, but not so far that you don't enjoy this sweet little love story as well. Um, Amanda vs. the Universe takes place kind of during a summer break, and it's super sweet, it's super fun. I really enjoy it. These are characters, um, this is a third book in a series, so I'm trying to be very vague here, because um, you've had a lot of buildup with these characters, and then, so the main girl, Amanda, we've spent a lot of time with her. We've seen her in the previous two books. And now we're in, she's being introduced to this male counterpart. Their banter back and forth is really fun. I really enjoyed this story. So if you have not tried any of Trisha Tai's works, I do have most of them, most of them have reviews. So I'll try to do, leave a link to the first one in this series, because she's got two different series. So I'll try to leave my review for the first one in this series um, linked for you to go and check out. The second ebook I read this month was Outrun the Wind. This is one that's coming out later this month. And I have to say I was kind of disappointed. This is one that was trying to play on the mythology of the Oracle Delphi, or Delphi, however you want to say it. And the concept of the story was great. I feel like the execution fell really flat for me. I was not attached to the characters. None of them were fleshed out very well. I ended up giving this three stars because I think the concept she's got going is great. I just feel like we didn't get enough. And I've noticed in books that I enjoy that I just want more. Like there's never enough in them, never enough meat. So I really was a little disappointed by this one. So I'm leaving it at three stars. It might go down from there, but right now it's a three just because I wanted more from it. I'm not 100% familiar with the mythology they were playing in, so I don't feel like I can rate it higher or lower based on how they played with the mythology. I did enjoy what I learned from the mythology in this particular story, but again, I just feel like everything fell flat. All the characters were two-dimensional. I could have had a whole lot more from it and probably enjoyed it a whole lot more. All right, so those are the two ebooks that I've read. Um, so there are actually four physical books. So there's six books and then a bunch of manga that I read in the first half of the month. I did quite a bit more reading than I initially thought I did. So let's go ahead and dig right into the physical books. First up, we have to talk about one of my new favorite reads of the year, Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I went to the opening night signing event. I have a vlog linked for it, and it's also my reading reactions as I go along. But all in all, I loved this book so entirely much. It was an absolutely fantastic read. It was the space book that I've been craving. It just made my heart so happy. Now, initially, you're not going to like our main character, Spensa. She's supposed to be that prickly teenage girl. But by the end of this book, I love Spensa. I feel like she's grown so much. I feel like she's matured a lot because of the things that she experiences throughout this novel. Essentially, Spensa is a girl whose father was branded as a um, coward when she's about seven. So her life from that point on for those next 10 years um, was really difficult. She was ostracized by the society, but her one goal in life was to be a pilot like her father. And because of that, um, her road 
to becoming a pilot is really rough. Society dictates a lot of things, and people are afraid of how society will react to her being the daughter of a coward, and so she is treated very poorly. So initially you understand why she's mad and frustrated and angry at the world, essentially. But as she continues into her experiences from then on, she learns a lot, she grows, she realizes that she's human, she's not immortal like she always thought she was, and that maybe what she wants isn't what she actually wants now that she's there and able to grasp it. So it's so good. I really love the character exploration. The characters in all of this, whether their parts are big or small, like, they're fleshed out. They're so well done. And that might have been part of why I didn't like Outrun the Wind so much, because I just read that after coming off of this. And character-wise, you can't compare the two. And Skyward's amazing. I love Brandon Sanderson anyway, but this was seriously top-notch YA space fiction. It was exactly what I needed. Next up, I read two more books in the Dark Hunter series by Sherilyn Kenyon. So I read Bad Moon Rising and No Mercy. These are paranormal smutty romances. They make my heart happy. Occasionally I need a smutty palette cleanser and so that's what this series has kind of become so I just buy them slowly one or two at a time and go from there and I really enjoyed these two particular reads and had a great time with them. I mean Bad Moon Rising is a couple of characters that we've seen their romance slowly throughout other stories so we finally get the whole story here so I really enjoyed that and then this one was new characters for the most part to me so I really um, well, one character was new, the other not so much. Either way, they were both really, really fun. We're dipping more into the were-hunter side of things in the Dark Hunter world. It's really fun. I really enjoy this series for what it is. It's just fun. And the last physical book that I have on this list is Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes. This is book five in the Fallen Kingdom series. I am hoping to get to Immortal Rain before the end of the year, but I might not. Either way, I've almost completed this series. It is completely done and out, and I did not like this one <laughs> as much. Um, I would probably give this a 3.5 stars, just like I gave the first book, because I feel like the first two were like 3, 3.5, and that's kind of where Crystal Storm sits for me. But book three and book four were fantastic. I really enjoyed those two, but now I feel like it dipped back down, so I'm really worried about the ending. <laughs> so we will see how I feel about the end of this series, but... Yeah, I think I, at this point I'm kind of ready to end the series, so I'll probably pick up Immortal Rain in the next week or two, and after I'm done with Tone Topple, get to reading it, but Crystal Storm, not my favorite in the series, definitely more like 3, 3.5 area. All right, friends, so that's it for the book portion of this video. We are now going to move on to the manga portion, so if you're not interested in manga, go ahead and click off. I hope you'll stay and that you will get exposed to some different manga series, whether old, new, borrowed, or blue. Alrighty, so first up we're going to talk about Eden Zero. Eden Zero is the new series by Hiro Mashima, who was the creator of Fairy Tale. There are nods to Fairy Tale in this series. This is super fun. This is more like space travel kind of a situation. It, essentially, we have these three characters. We've got Shiki, this young man who was left on Grand Belt Island by his grandfather, uncle, something along those lines. And he takes care of all the machines on Grand Belt Island. And then this travel vlogger, essentially Becca, Rebecca, I guess you could say, comes to visit this area. It's the first time someone's visited in a hundred years outside of when Shiki came. And Shiki and Rebecca meet, they form a friendship, and they decide to go on adventures with a blue cat named Happy. No, this blue cat does not have wings, so it's not exactly the same Happy, but I'm not going to tell you why the Happies are different. All in all, I loved this. It was so much fun. There were definitely cameos from fairy tale characters throughout, which made it a lot of fun for me. And I really just thoroughly enjoyed this. I'm really going to love this series. I think it's sweet, I think it's fun. And I really think it's going to be a great ride. So if you loved Fairy Tale, definitely check out Eden Zero. Next we have LDK Volume 2. I did read Volume 1 during the 24-hour Tezuka Readathon. So if you want to know everything that I read during that, I will leave that linked for you. But this is a fun contemporary shoujo manga. I really like it. These two end up inadvertently living together because they were neighbors and 
Anyways, it's a lot of fun. It's really cute. I'm really looking forward to picking up more in this series. Next on this list is Waiting for Spring, Volume 6. This is essentially a shoujo meets basketball kind of story. So there's this girl Mitsuki ends up befriending the four hot boys from the basketball team and things ensue from there. There's one that she likes more than the others. He happens to like her, but his fr her friend from growing up comes in and tries to like jump in the middle of all of it. It's really fun. I really enjoy it. Reverse harem, always fun. Can't go wrong with them in my opinion. I have thoroughly been enjoying Waiting for Spring, so I'm excited to pick up I think there's three more volumes currently out. I'm excited to pick them up soon. Next up is another release I've been anxiously waiting for, and that is Dream and Sun Volume 8. I love Dream and Sun so much. This is like Fruits Basket without the paranormal side of things. And this is by Ichigo Takano, who also did Orange. So I really like his art style. And Ichigo Takano weaves a wonderful story. My ship got to see some light of day in this one, and it made my heart very happy. Um, it's not fully sailing at this point, but I'm hopeful. And yeah, I just, I adore this series. I can't tell you much about it without spoiling things. But if you like fun shoujo manga, it, this is definitely a river serum as well. I don't know why that's my MO lately, but I really like them. Dream and Sun's adorable. I highly recommend picking it up. Next we have Hatsuharu Volume 3. This is a series about a playboy who ends up getting decked by this girl at school because he was mean to her friend and he's now attracted to her and has no interest in other girls. So it's been really interesting for his interactions with her as well as the friend dynamic in general with all of them in this series. It's really fun, really cute, seriously adorable. The banter back and forth is fantastic. Lots of blushing because they're high school kids. It's fun, like seriously so fun. I have so much fun reading these. I can't really rate them, so I don't. <laughs> That's why I haven't been as active on Goodreads lately. Like, it's hard for me to rate these because I just enjoy them so much. I can't give everything five stars forever. Like, I just really enjoy it. Take it for what you will. Pick it up. And last but not least, I polished off an entire manga series. So I read volume one of Absolute Boyfriend in my last wrap up. I found the rest of the series on thrift books, bought them all, and binged them. So we have volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, and volume six. So Absolute Boy Friend is essentially about this girl who has always wanted a boyfriend, keeps getting, you know, turned down. So she inadvertently orders a late night dating robot and <laughs> shenanigans ensue from there. This is a short series. It's complete. It's an older one, but I absolutely loved Absolute Boyfriend. It was so fun. I really loved the dynamic they played with, with Do Way I Have Feelings. It ended perfectly for me and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. So I highly suggest checking out Absolute Boyfriend if you can get your hands on it because it was a lot of fun. So friends, that is everything that I read in the first half of the month of November. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read of November has been so far. Mine is absolutely Skyward or Dream and Sun Volume 8 because I absolutely adore both of them. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below. If you're new here, hi, I'm Shay. Welcome. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon so you know when to come hang out with me. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.